Hello. Today we are joined by Ben Israel, who's still trying to sort out his camera and his settings. <laughs> but um, basically, Ben, would you like to introduce yourself? Am I am I fully on? You are recording. Well, we are recording. Yes. Okay. Cool. Cool. Yes. Yeah, so I'm um, Ben Israel reports. Um, you know, I just like research certain things. I report on certain different things and events. Um, like yeah. as of now, Don't as yet. of now, though, can you hear me? Yes, sir, I can hear you, Gon. Yeah, as of now, though, I am kind of studying like things to do with um religion and stuff like that. Sorry, I was going to just ask you when you uh, are you, so you are not in terms of your background, you're not a Muslim. No. What would you say is your religion? I'm actually secular. But so you so sorry when when you say secular, are you saying you don't you believe in God? You don't have a religion, or what are you? Yeah, at the moment, I'm not necessarily following a religion per se. I do kind of lean a bit more towards the Bible, but um, I'm just not following any religion. I'm not of any um, organized religion. That's fine. And you're based in the United Kingdom and you were born here? Yes. Fantastic. And can I ask, your name is Ben Israel. When it says Israel, are you a supporter of Israel? Nope, I'm nothing to do with the state of Israel. Is that your name? Yeah. Well, I, I won't get into too much of that, but I go by the name Ben Israel. Uh, but no, I'm not the supporter of um, Israel. Um, like, even if we talk historically, then my... My, I'm of the opinion, not even opinion, but just through the research that the people who's there were not originally there at that time anyway. So when you say the people who were there, are you saying the Palestinian? Who who are you supporting then? Like, are you saying the Palestinians weren't there? Or are you saying that the Jewish people weren't there? So I'm saying none of them were there at that time. So whether they're the Arabs, right? Because people call them Palestinian, but they're Arabs. And the so-called Jewish man, none of them were there at that time. Okay, interesting. Right, so you contacted me and you wanted to come on. I have no yeah. clue what you want to talk about, what topics you want to talk about. So over to you. Yeah, well, you know, this is very, it's very funny because this is a hot topic right now. But, you know, I wanted to discuss about Islam and the ideology of it. And, you know, for me, I believe that this is something um, that it's, you know, I, I don't agree with the ideology that basically I'll put it that way. And you don't agree with the ideology because of the research that you're currently doing on all religions or because of your experience of Muslims or. Um, a bit more info. Yeah, so just to be clear, it's, it's not necessarily the experience of Muslims, because in many different religions, you will have some people that do things which isn't to do with or concerning the religion. But how do you judge a religion or a belief? You go into the actual, you know, um, literature or religious books of those beliefs and you examine it by that. Okay, so you're basing your... And when you say you are not happy, like, with the ideology, what exactly in the ideology do you therefore, um, like... Can you give us a bit more detail? Yeah, like what do I disagree with? Okay, so I'll be very clear and I'll be very to the point. Now, I don't believe that this religion is good for all of mankind, even the Arabs, but I'm going to say also in particular for black people, right? I don't believe all black people are of one exact group. I believe they're of different groups, different ethnicities, but anyone who's considered as black because... When I'm studying some of the Islamic um, literature, so the the two main things which are like the within like the highest level is, of course, number one is the Quran and second is the Hadith, especially when researching Sunni Islam. Shia is a little bit different. Some say Shias are not even Muslims, but within Sunni Islam, um, when I study things within the Quran and then especially going into the Hadith, were finding out things like um, the selling and trading of slaves, right? And Muhammad himself traded two black slaves to redeem an Arab, right? So it was showing you the currency. He was doing bog-off deals on the blacks. Um, you know, we, we find out that, for example, like the only place 
in the world where you can openly go and buy a black slave is in the Muslim world, right? And Even now, yes, a hundred percent really, now. Yes, so if you people look, still doing that now. Yes, they've never stopped. So part of the history was if you look at Morocco, Morocco was actually bombed into submission by the so-called white man, and they had to stop slavery. But places like Mauritania has never stopped slavery. Right. Sudan has never stopped slavery. So some people could say in the north, they might want to claim them as black. But through Abrahamic religions, you are what your father is. Through the Islamic history and the enslavement, they would chop off the testicles and the penis of the men. So by that definition, they would all, most of them would descend from an Arab Muslim man. And they enslaved the blacks of the south of Sudan. Like, I'm talking black, like purple, black, tall, slim. You know, they have slavery in um, Libya. That's a very recent one. Openly selling black slaves there. I think you can buy a black slave for $100. Um, they were practicing it all over the, what's the Arabian Peninsula, right? Places like, not Dubai, like Qatar, some other kind of places spread around. Um... Mauritania, Mali, some parts of Chad, Sudan, and I think there's one other country. And for example, another thing is as well is that many black slaves within the Islamic slave trade were taken all the way to India, to the Indian subcontinent. So there they call them the cities. So you're from Pakistan. I don't know if you know much about the cities. I'm definitely not from Pakistan. <laughs> oh, you're not from Pakistan. I, I'm I'm from Britain. I, it's, no, my parents were born in Pakistan. You're right. Oh yeah, yeah. It's fine. It, my grandparents were born in India, but I know what you mean. But yeah, I I, know, I don't consider myself from Pakistan. Like I say, I've got nothing to do with Pakistan at all. <laughs> what? What? So you're rejecting Pakistan? I never accepted it to reject it. So I'm British, mate. Ah. <laughs> uh? wow. I'm British. I'm I'm only loyal to Britain. <laughs> okay 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 so yeah so there's these these things like this there's also the other thing which is sex slavery that wasn't necessarily determining of like a specific race even though um many arab muslims have always kidnapped black women even people like gaddafi he was involved in the slave trade and he had kidnapped um especially a lot of um black women or african women and, you know, he was raping them and things like that. And people might say, oh, well, it's just him doing that. But they don't understand that this is actually Islamic. Right. And this is in the Hadiths. Um, so, you know, the sex slavery, I'm against that. They have the female genital mutilation. And then people say that, no, this is an ancient African custom, you know, like Egyptian. So not the Arabs we see in Egypt today, but original black Egyptians. But actually, it, when you read in parts of the Hadith, you find out that this was in the Hadith. This is in Islamic literature. And there's a part where it says, do not cut too severely, um, uh, you know, as it can injure them badly or whatever. So it's not saying don't do the circumcision, but it's just saying don't cut too severely, you know. So... You, you have all of these things and there's the regular thing that they use to try and get the black people into Islam, talking about Bilal, the famous, the best famous, <laughs> you know, you know, this guy Bilal. And I'm saying even that story is false. The reason why it's false, and I won't um, even take this seriously, Bilal's father was an Arab. Yes, they're mm -hmm. focusing on his skin color because the mother was Abyssinian from Ethiopia, Somalia, those regions. But going by Abrahamic faiths again, you are what your father is, so therefore he would be considered an Arab. That's why he was... Never heard that before. Never Sorry? heard that before. I've never yeah, heard that look, before. Do a quick search on Google. So that's why they keep banging on about this guy, but I'm saying that that doesn't... Count. Yeah, that doesn't count then, Right. But it's like there's an obsession with like, with things like skin color. Because when you read in the hadiths, it talks many times about the whiteness of Muhammad. The whiteness of his armpits, the whiteness of his shin, the whiteness of his arm. And it's like, wow, well, was this guy a white Arab prophet? You know, 
like they say everyone is equal, but I've never seen any equality, you know, um, you know, even going into the other topics like misogyny. So, you know, in the Quran, you're allowed to beat your wife if she disobeys you. And then when you look in re in more recent translations, it says in brackets lightly. But it doesn't say that in older Qurans. So they put that in there to make it more palatable to people in the Western countries. Right. But I'm saying if this thing is from God, it doesn't seem like a perfect religion or a perfect doctrine because you're allowed to beat your wife if she disobeys you. So, for example, if my wife, if I have a wife and she doesn't cook the birani on time, I've got to box it up. Right. And this is madness because. Like in a religion, it should teach you to, you know, like to have patience, understanding. I can't hear you. Can't Sorry, I... I was muted there. So can I just say one thing on that? So yeah. I think in the Quran and I'm, I'm, I'm by no means a scholar. And I and I always say this when I whenever I make videos about talking about the Quran or anything, because obviously, you know, um, I don't claim to be a scholar. I'm not a scholar. I'm sure that the scholars will be able to give you more of an answer because they'll, they'll know, you know, what the details of what's said where. Um, so what I would say is from what my understanding of what's written in the Quran is it doesn't just say I'll beat your wife. It gives the stages of don't talk to yeah, her first, stop. then don't don't yeah. have sex with her, you know. As and if it gives you, you stages, her. give her a chance basically to improve, <laughs> to sort and herself out. Her and then there's a last option. Of course, you know, as a woman, yeah, I'm not happy that there is even that option, you know, at all. But uh, I would say that from my perspective is when we when we talk about anything in the Quran, it's, it is important to talk about the verses before and after as well, because otherwise a whole perspective for me does it does change because Telling someone that the Quran says you're to beat your wife is different to it's got stages and then it says that's like the last resort. But I'm not I'm not saying that I'm happy with it, whether you say it, you know, in, in the latter or the former version, you know. So I would say, look, for me, where I stand is I have a lot of red flags in Islam myself. I made yeah. a video. Oh, yeah, about I know. This. I've watched so many of your videos. I comment on your videos. What? Oh, yeah. So with me is I do have red flags. I would say more than the scripture, the, the biggest red flag for me is how Muslim people behave. Right. Because there are things written in the Bible as well and the Old Testament as well. And there are stuff. There is stuff written in all the scriptures, because when I've done my research as well, I can find something. I'm like, oh, I'm not happy with that in Christianity or I'm not happy with that in Hinduism. So I thought, OK, you know, yes, there are scriptures, but then there are humans and their common sense and how they behave. I don't like what I don't like about Muslims. Some of them is the threatening, the low tolerance, the threatening. Because I'm like, what are you threatened about? You know, if I've been so respectful, the way I've spoken about the crit where I've criticized some things that I'm not happy with and the red flags, I've done it in a very respectful way. No other person will show you that much respect when they're criticizing the stuff. And if you can't even handle that, you know, and you're trying to scare me, and what are you scared of? You know, so those are the issues I have. But I really, really feel like there's lots of people who want to talk, but they feel they can't talk. Because the Islamophobic card is thrown at them, the, you know, the racism card is thrown at them. I feel like a healthy debate is important because otherwise people will continue to bottle things up. And then all that's going to happen is people will explode, right? And what I'm trying to do is, while things are still civil, especially in UK, there's not a civil war. Is it civil? You know? is it civil? It's still civil, yeah, because we haven't broken out in a proper civil war yet. i tell you why I don't believe that. So some people, they know me because I've done a few talks in Speaker's Corner or I've been involved in discussion um, like with one Christian guy called Bob and maybe one or two other people more smaller. Now, I had studied um, Speaker's Corner for a little while and there was a Turkish woman. She's an ex-Muslim. Her father was an imam in Turkey. So Hatun, what's her name? Hatun, Hatun Tash. <laughs> and, and like, yeah. And like people, you know, a guy tried to take her life. He stabbed her in the middle of the park. When was yeah. this? In front of you? Uh, no, I wasn't there at the time. I wasn't going to Speaker's Corner, but he stabbed her around this bit here of the face. Now, there's a part in the Hadith where it's saying about strike to the neck. So I believe he tried to stab her. 
but he's missed and she went like that, so it got hair. Is he in jail now? Tell me he's yes, in jail. He got 16 years. Oh, thank God. At least he's in yeah. jail now. And and the thing is, what you have to understand, so I know some Muslims, you know, and most Muslims are Sunni, and some are trying to say they don't agree with the hadith, they don't believe in it. But the hadith is an important part of the Islamic um, literature, especially if you're a Sunni. And the thing is, is that there is some things, many things in the hadith, which are very worrying and very dangerous. And remember, like, what was the punishment for leaving Islam? It was death. According to the hadiths, it is according to the, to the Quran. There's no compulsion in religion. But the reality and, is, there is compulsion. <laughs> Let's so this honest. is, a, but that's what I'm saying. So then, I I feel like I, I and this is what I was trying to say. To be fair to Islam, I need I have tried to distinguish between the scriptures and the Muslims. And when I say scripture, I only see the Quran personally as scripture. I see hadiths so as historical. Hadith. No, no, I see, I, I see hadiths personally as a historical, you know, historical um, record. I don't see it as scripture. The reason is because when I read the Quran, the Quran told me not to follow any other book apart from the Quran. It said, do not follow any other book. This Quran is complete, is perfect. So, so I feel like there are lots of things that are against the Quran in the hadiths and things like that. And there are lots of behaviors Muslims are doing, which has nothing to do with the Quran, if you believe the Quran is the word of God. So I feel a lot of the problems and the problematic material is in the, in the hadiths, because even listening to what you have said, the majority of quotes you've given are from the hadiths. Yes, hadith. you've mentioned one from the Quran, but the majority of the troubling stuff is more in the hadith side. And even I is it Saudi, Saudi Arabia's, is it prince or whatever, king, or whatever yeah, you call MBS, them. he's trying to move away from the Hadiths, actually, himself. I'm not sure whether you're aware of this. He's trying to move away from the Hadiths. Uh, like, <laughs> he's trying to but base it more on Quran, you know. So some people are having an issue with that. Like, for example, he's saying women are going to decide themselves what they're going to wear. And lots of I men on social media are like, oh, what, women are going to decide what they're going to wear? Yeah, we're humans. Wow, we're going to decide what we're going to do. You know? It's crazy. <laughs> so he's trying to reform it, I feel, but slowly because uh. he knows the tolerance is low. Yeah, yeah, you see, Mohammed bin Salman, he's very interesting. And um, I like Mohammed bin Salman. I'm not going to lie. I really like the guy. Because he realizes that to bring somewhere like Saudi Arabia into the 21st century, you can't be living by a set of barbaric rules, right? So I would say, yes, a lot of the things that I think is very problematic is on the Hadith. There's a few things that is problematic in the Quran because there was even sex slaves like, you know, what the right hand possesses and things like that. Concubines. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, so there was some things a bit problematic there. Just to make this clear, I don't have any problem with a man who wants to marry more than one woman. I have no issue with that. <laughs> like, I'm being honest. I don't have well, any issue. That's fine. But what, why would you not have an issue with that? Is it because of the fairness that you have to treat them and provide for them? No, I'd say that's false. I don't believe in that everything is equal, fair. That's a lie. What it is, I think that if these people are adults and they make a choice, because remember, you're not forcing the woman into the marriage. If they accept, then that's that's on them. Whatever agreement they have, that's between them, right? I just think that when it's something like the the sex slaves and other things now that's where the issue is but if a man presents himself to you and he says look this is how i am i like other women you know i'll like you to be you know part of this you can make a choice if you accept or not so that's that's why i don't i don't have the biggest problem with it what i do think though is that a lot of people try to pass it off like oh well no, um, we're not doing it for like physical, sexual reasons. And it's, you know, for other reasons. But primarily, primarily it is it's based on attraction and things like that. Let's just not play any games. Yes, I would say that with this, I agree that, uh, you know, if people are adults and they're not doing anything illegal and everyone's fine, who am I to say, don't do this? It's like, you know, like it's like having affairs. Like, slightly different but you know what I mean who am I to say yes on like it's up to people what they do I would say the only thing what I don't like about the whole um for marriage thing is that so yesterday it's funny I was listening to this talk I don't usually listen to Pakistani debates or anything like that but it popped up in my um my feed 
And then I saw basically they were talking about four marriages and the guy, the scholar was saying, oh yeah, a husband doesn't even need to ask his first wife for permission to marry the second. Oh, like, the muta, is it muta marriages? Or muta? No, 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 muta marriage is separate. Muta marriage is a Shia thing. I'm saying that there was a scholar uh, debating in Pakistan um, and he was saying basically that man doesn't need to ask his first wife for permission to marry a second wife. So that for me is wrong because then it's like, then all parties are not consenting to this arrangement. What you're saying is the first wife I don't care about it doesn't, she's going to have to suck it up, you know, and, and I can marry a second and a third. That's the issue I have. So as long as everyone is happy, I'm fine. But if, if you're not asking your wife from permission, you think you don't need to ask your wife for permission, that part bothers me, right? Because yeah. no, which woman which woman in her right mind would be happy with a husband having sex with another woman? I don't care if he's married to her or not. Yeah, I, I think at least, you know, I might use the word of, I wouldn't say necessarily permission, but discussing it with the other, with the first wife. You know, I, I might use that word. I, I think, you see, this is why I go in, when I go to the Hadith, right, I think the Hadith is based on the Quran. The reason why I say that, yeah, is, I think, was it Aisha who said that nobody has suffered more than the believing woman? Right? So a lot of these people, they were they were having multiple wives. I wouldn't say all of them, but, you know, a fair, a good amount. And I think the woman had suffered under that because you're saying that the scholar said that um, the guy can have the second wife without even communicating with the first wife. So a woman would suffer like that. And it's like even when you said that there was no compulsion in the religion, things like that, yeah? But you find that many people were were killed who were not Muslim. Like there's the scriptures where it says, fight those who don't believe um, in Allah. So we're saying there's no compulsion, but we find something that seems a bit contradictory where it says to fight those who don't believe in that religion. Can I just pause you there? I think, again, my understanding is, I'm not trying to justify any of this, and I keep saying I'm not a scholar, but like my understanding, what I've been, um, from my research that I've done is, the verses before and after do need to be read as well because of the context because what because apparently muslims were going to war with the jewish tribes it was tribe tribal wars basically and it was talking about those in that context right so the people who are not believing who are causing mischief because actually the first 10 years of islam the muslims were being persecuted and the, the muslims were not allowed to attack back like god didn't allow it so you just have to if you're getting killed just as a Muslim, you're getting killed. You're not, you weren't allowed to defend yourself. You weren't allowed to retaliate as a Muslim. But then after that, things change. And then you were allowed to retaliate after 10 years of persecution. So there is a bit of context. So look, the, the, where I stand with Islam right now, and I'm going to do a separate video on this, is I feel like there are different versions of Islam and Prophet Muhammad that people have. Obviously, if you don't believe in Islam, you believe everything he did was wrong and, you know, and if you are a Muslim, well, I've been then studying some of the different versions and stuff. Exactly. Even if you're a Muslim, you have two versions of Prophet Muhammad in your mind. One is he married a six year old and that's OK. The other is he didn't marry a six year old. And that's why you're OK with him being a prophet, because he didn't marry a six year old. There are two. <laughs> ver no, there are two versions. And I've heard scholars. Well, I hear you, I hear you. The, the majority of people do believe like scholars that, yes, yeah, she was six and nine when they consummated the, you know, six when they got married and nine when they consummated the marriage. But I the, the scholars I listen to that, that that are way more logical do actually say, no, no, she wasn't that small. They made her. And then there's reasons why. And this is why the hadiths are problematic, because they can't be relied upon because Prophet Muhammad never told anyone to write the hadiths. They were written a few hundred years after he, every, him and yeah, everyone else is talking about passed away. So it's hearsay, right? And and what other people say as well is because the other leaders of Islam who came, they had their own hidden agendas of trying to spread Islam and, and conquer. They added things in the Hadiths to say this is scripture to make people do what they wanted them to do. But One question. You see, the issue is, though, is that some of the Hadiths that I've been looking at is what is classified as sahi or like as strong hadith now the issue that i'm having if this is really true because there's a guy that i watch he's a shia right and i really like him his name is called um what's his name is that shia that a lot of people don't like they call him imam tawhidi right now if he's you know i think he's tried to like you know 
turn things all around or whatever. But then the thing is, is that if what you're saying is true, then is that that means the whole, like most, all the hadiths has to go. So there is no more like what we would know or understand as like Sunni Islam that won't really exist the way how we know it. And that's why it's being defended. This is this is what you need to understand is that this is why I'm trying to distinguish between the scripture and what people are doing because I feel if Islam is true, it's not, people aren't following it as it was meant to be followed because they the politics has been added. People have their own hidden agendas now. They're trying to now protect something even if they know there's something right in it because they feel as if, oh, you know, people are going to open, people are going to think the whole thing is wrong. So this is what I think is going on, if it is from God. And that's what I feel. I still feel maybe it is from God, but somewhere something's gone wrong down the line, because that's happened with all the religions. If you look at all of them, they all have changed. What they were thousands of years ago is not yeah. is not the way we're all following it. Like, are Jew, Jewish people really following Judaism exactly how it was followed 4,000 years ago? How do we know? Christianity. No, they're, not, the, they're, not, they're not. They're not. No one is. Hindus, are they following their religion exactly how it was like whenever? This is like the oldest religion in the world, right? So what I feel is Islam is still the newest religion. It was 1,400 years ago versus 2,000, 3,000, you know. So, so the other religions have reformed themselves and they've kind of done their stuff. But obviously what, what's happened is that Islam, because Sunni, because a lot of Muslims are adamant that the hadith have to be used as scripture and they're not willing to now back down on that you know i feel that is the main issue so for me and i'm going to do a video on this i'm going to write a list of what kind what what um profile of islam would i be happy to accept that this is from god versus you know what version of islam would i be happy to accept you know because oh. because the current version the majority of muslims follow i can never accept that low tolerance and all this kind of stuff misogyny. Yeah, I, I don't accept this. This is not from this kind of stuff can't be from God. But yeah, a different version of Islam that may be the true version, may be the true version, which some scholars that I listen to talk about, you know, they're not as famous and they're not all that. But I, I've heard um two or three scholars, there's a few British ones and there's one Pakistani one. So there are scholars out there. But again, the problem with these scholars is when they talk about um when they challenge a lot of the current practices of the majority of Muslims, they are attacked and threatened. One scholar had to move from Pakistan to America. Oh, He's oh yeah, yeah. Pakistan, it's, it's, yeah, they get a lot, they'll get a lot of heat. There's the, um, what they call the blasphemy laws. Yeah, it's, it's, it's too dangerous, man, very dangerous. One scholar had to move from Pakistan. He's, he lives in America now. He's preaching in America his version basically of what he feels and he's a scholar and that's the version when he talks he makes sense he says no Aisha wasn't six years old he talks about everything even like, you know the concubines this and that he explains everything and it his version definitely makes sense to me and there's other British scholars in UK who say the same thing but the problem is the majority of Muslims also attack those scholars because they just want to hold on to the misogyny the the bad stuff they just want to hold on to it but you you know what that means then? That's very problematic also because now that means that you could be amongst a lot of guys who want to practice child marriage, who want to rape, who want to beat women up. Because even like when I was in the park, I've noticed there's a lot of guys now, just to make this clear, I'm not saying all, because people get emotional and saying I'm saying all, it's not all. But I've seen a lot of guys that like to, like you know just insult women but they seem like they want to beat them up if there wasn't any police there because th there's a short east indian woman i call her the christian terrorist right and she's holding up signs saying that you know muhammad was a pedophile he was this he was that and like i know that if there was no police in the park she would have been beaten down several times and she's like i don't even think she's even five foot two she's probably four, five foot or four foot ten and like the reason why they're holding on to these things is because they just want to abuse people. There's some of these people that want to attack and marry children. I'm not even going to get into the grooming gangs. Let, you know, let's not even go there. You know, can I? We can go there, but can I say some of this? We need to distinguish be between religion and culture as well, because some of these things are very very much cultural like pakistan for example i personally don't see pakistan as a muslim country i oh. i've gone there no i don't see it as a muslim country <laughs> i've gone there i've gone there several times i don't see those people as muslim people like they're good at pretend like they make out they're, 
they're not even religious. You won't see any of hardly, hardly any of them covered properly. There's a lot of degeneracy happening in Pakistan. I don't classify them. I don't classify Pakistan as a Muslim country. I would say countries like Saudi Arabia, you know, those where they you do have Sharia law. Look, there's a difference between third world country and first world country. Saudi Arabia divide our first world Muslim countries, right? And Pakistan and these other if Afghanistan, they're third world Muslim countries. So the problem is a lot of the third world Muslim countries have come into the United Kingdom and they're giving a really shit impression of Muslims and their own country and their culture. And and a lot of the uneducation and all that's coming from there as well. And I'm not saying this kind of stuff isn't happening in Saudi Arabia or Dubai in, you know, but those places are more first world, they are much more better. And even the first world Muslim countries don't want to accept the third world Muslims. You know this, right? Don't. They don't want to accept the third world Muslims. They don't. Um, the, the issue is though, because I have a friend, he's from Pakistan, and he said he has spoken to some other Pakistani different groups and stuff like that. And he said they've been saying like a lot of mad things. A lot of their targets is for little young white girls. My, I'm of the opinion that they have an obsession with white people, but they're like too cowardly to like maybe go out and get like a white woman who's like 20 and above or whatever. So they do those things. But part of their argument Right, because there was one guy from Pakistan, he rang me up at about 2.30 a.m., 3 in the morning, to debate me why he's allowed to marry girls between the age of 9 and 13. Their argument is, and this is a very common argument, as soon as she gets on her period, then you can go and do things with them. Then also they say, oh, but Aisha, the mother of us all, she was 9. So... Um, I can... find this is what I find problematic, and this is what I'm saying, and this is why you don't you don't find Aisha's age in the Quran, the, because the Quran is saying how you need to live your life. It it, it doesn't matter what age Aisha was in the because whatever you need to know is in the Quran, and Aisha's age is not in the Quran because it talks about you know you need to be um the marriage age, not just physically but intellectually as well. I think something like that is I think something like that is me um, mentioned in the Quran. So what I feel is, but you're right, and this is the problem I have. This is my red flag. If someone will will say to me, you know, the only there's only one version of Islam, and that version is the Quran and the Hadiths, and every single thing in these Hadiths, I cannot accept that because there is so much stuff that is clearly not right. You know, and I, that's what that's what I feel. That as a mother of a six year old. Oh yeah, you know, of course. I'm yeah. not gonna do not say to yeah, me it's you, okay yeah, to marry. Do not yeah. go down that route. You know, this makes me so angry. And these this is what I find problematic. The problem is a lot of Muslims believe Aisha was six and nine, and they're okay with it just because they feel yeah, the person who's a prophet blue. did it. Yeah, they is... don't get it that maybe then that guy is not a prophet then, right? Maybe, just maybe, right? So I'm not, I'm not saying he is or he isn't. I'm just saying, like, you need... The thing is, a lot of Muslims are just brainwashed from a very, very young age to accept mm -hmm. things. It's normalized. They've, their mind is primed into believing and accepting things, which otherwise, when they grow up, they wouldn't accept. Yeah. I, I've actually got a point, because I've noticed that when I speak to some people from, like, you know, the Indian subcontinent, you know, the wider parts of Asia and even certain parts of Africa, they're not always necessarily taught how to critically think. But just to accept something if it's come from your leader or if it's in your religion. And I'm saying, let's use logic here. You cannot say that you can marry or have sex with someone, um, a female, when they start their period. Now, that is the beginning of them maturing and turning into an adult. But you'd need at least five years, six years, exactly. seven years. Your body changes. When, as soon as your period comes, that doesn't mean you could give... Yeah, you can give birth, but it's not good for you physically because your hips need to expand. Your, yeah. your body changes. That, that's the start of the process. It takes a couple of years for your body to change, right? Yeah. Oh, we, I can't even believe we're having to explain this. This is what makes me so angry. And then, and then these but people... This has been a big listen. debate. You see, in the park, there's people who's been openly saying that they would be okay with child marriage. They would be okay with slavery. You know, they would be okay. You know, all these kind of mad things, even down to some, I'd say like a lesser, a lesser evil is like drinking the camel urine and all that. I was watching a story for the third or fourth time today. And that's another foolish story anyway. That's what I'm saying. So, but, but you know what? A lot of these, thing. the problem is a lot of these things are in the a, a, other Abrahamic faiths as well. Like, for example, there's a gentleman who actually commented underneath one of my videos, and we only do have three minutes left. But like he said, for example, um, 
you know, about Jesus. Oh, Jesus, you know, there was a star that kings saw and they followed it and there happened to be a baby. They just then assumed it's, he's from God. And because Mary had uh, basically, um, what they said about Mary was the fact that she actually had sex outside of marriage. And then she pretended as if this is a virgin birth, you know, just to just so she doesn't get told off. That so is, then he was, you know, say so yeah. we can make up that stories about Jewish, all. That is a Jewish, um, like made up story from so called Jewish people. But no, but I that's my point, though, that, that you know, so we can we can find. I'm sure I can find a million faults in Islam and all other religions as well. So it's it's always going to get down to belief. What do you believe in? It's true. I do agree with what you're saying, but the issue is when you see people carrying out these kind of things, that's where, for me, it's been dangerous and problematic and things like where you still have an open slave trade and not one of these people have said anything about it, but everyone wants, like, you know, they want a lot of black people to support Palestine and all that, and for me, you know, I've had no involvement with that because I'm saying until you address this slave trade, don't come and tell me about Palestine because Palestinian Arabs took black people into slavery. It's a no, it's a fact. Research it. They took blacks into slavery, and to this day, they don't associate with black Palestinians. So don't come and tell me I need to support this because that. No, I'm not going to do it. You see what I'm saying? So these are a lot of the issues that I have, but. You know, I think the time... I don't know any of this. I, I, didn't, I mean, this is the thing. I'm very, very ignorant. Like, I don't actually know what's yeah. going on in the world. I didn't know there's still slavery going. I thought that what happened years ago. That was oh, ended. with the white man that happened years ago, within within the Arabs and the Muslim world, it's still happening today. They still have them in today. I wonder how many Muslims know this. Yeah, I wonder how many you know, I wonder how many Muslims know this. And this is the thing. When I post a video, a lot of people just get defensive, defensive, defensive. They don't a lot of Muslims and I do feel hide and they don't answer the question. Like, come on, guys. Because they Muslim, know the answer, they're trying to deflect. That's what I'm saying. Don't do, if you're a Muslim and you listen to this, please try to engage with the conversation. If something is wrong, say it's wrong. Don't feel that you can't say it's wrong. Just because like please use your critical reasoning skills. That is what I'm trying to urge people. Right. And and of every faith, this is the whole point of my channel is like to talk, to have a civil conversation. But I truly believe, look, I truly believe you can research all religions as much as possible, like I'm trying to do. It will always come down to belief. Because like I said, there's different versions of Prophet Muhammad people believe in. There's different versions of Islam and all other religions. Right. Because you've got Christians and some believe Jesus was the son of God and others don't believe that. There are different versions. Right. So I feel like even in Hinduism, like they're just different sects almost so it's up to you each to your own anyway this is call is ending now i hope you got everything out of this conversation that you wanted yeah i, I got a good amount not everything but i got a good amount out some of the main points well maybe you can come back another day we'll see how this goes yeah we're <laughs> gonna do a round two it was, all yeah. right cool fantastic thank you so much for coming thanks nice one take care bye bye, -bye.